Hello, parents. My name is Deshaun Coleman. I serve as the Assistant Dean of Student Services and the Title IX Coordinator. And uh, want to welcome you to this uh, recording uh, along with video. I will be sharing information with you as it relates to the Title IX expectations here at Lewis University. Want to start off with the point of what is Title IX? Title IX is a civil right law that is uh, mandated by the U.S. Department of Education, uh, and it's a federal law, and it actually prohibits any discrimination uh, again, based on sex in education. I normally read this document. Lawyers share with me, Dr. Coleman, if you do not read this information, they do not have it. So here we go. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, or by excluding from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to uh, discrimination under any educational program or activity receiving federal funds through the U.S. Department of Education. In a nutshell, if an institution, private or public, actually receive federal funds from the U.S. Department of Education, they must abide by the uh, Title IX um, regulations that is set forth by the U.S. Department of Education. And that protects our students and staff. Protect them from what, Dr. Coleman? It protects them from the from conduct that is prohibited on our campus. And here are those items. Gender, discrimination, sexual harassment, sexual in, intimidation, sexual assault, sexual exploitation, relationship violence, and that is dating and domestic violence, uh, stalking or cyber stalking. So any of these items fall under the U.S. Department of Education Title IX, and if that happens with our students, they should report that information to me. Um, we also have uh, deputies and staff members who also are aware of the fact that if these items happen on campus, students should inform them. I will give a presentation to our students as well, so they will have the same information uh, that you have, but I go a little bit more in depth as it relates to uh, the expectation of students and understanding what they need to do and the process that they need to go through as it relates to reporting anything that's under the Title IX uh, regulations. This is how we actually uh, process the any any um any complaint that we have, we actually process it through uh, informal or formal um, process. The informal process would be that we actually sit with students. Uh, so the report is filed. We take a look at the report as a team, and then we have that information. We talk talk to the respondent and we talk to the complainant, and that would be the person. The complainant would be the person who is actually filing the complaint. The respondent would be the person that it's against. We actually would meet with both of them, let them know um, the that we receive the report. They would actually come to an agreement that it uh, it is an informal, and normally we based it on the thought and the expectation of the complainant, and then we also inform the respondent, and we let them know that we want to come to an a uh, an agreement, and it is going to be verbal or in writing or both, and we normally ask the complainant. The, resol the resolution that they would prefer if it's, uh, if it's going to be informal. Then we also have the process as it relates to the, the uh, formal complaint. The formal complaint is actually making sure we do a report. Um, we actually have a live hearing and you have the complainant, the respondent, you have advisors, you have uh, also you have the individual who are gonna be asking questions. Um, then we come to an agreement where that we look on the evidence that the preponderance of evidence that if the uh, uh, alleged action has been taken, was taken or was offensive, and if it actually violated the, the principles or the regulations, and then we actually let um, both 
parties know. And then we also make sure that we give a written documentation for both of them so they are aware of why this um, adjudication has been uh, provided. Then there's also an appeal process. If a person feels as though that uh, the complainant feels as though that it's it wasn't um, to their best interest, and they feel as though that no, this is not this. The, it, he should he or she should have been uh, um, suspended from school, so to speak. Um, they can actually uh, complete the appeal process. The respondent has also the right to do the same thing. That uh, process will be provided to our provost, and the provost would actually make the decision based on the evidence, uh, new evidence, or based on the stipulation of if there was uh, some information that was uh, dishonest, those, uh, those pieces would actually uh, rely on the provost to make a change of decision. On our website, we actually try to make sure that we provide information from uh, our website, and it's called LU Cares. There you would actually find Title IX information. You will find information as it relates to uh, sexual misconduct. Um, you, there's more information as it relates to our policies and procedures uh, for in making sure that the student is, has all the information, all the terminologies, uh, and the process that we just shared. And then it, it also will provide in students with information or the public with information uh, as it relates to the Title IX um, process and information. We have a team and our team, uh, this is our team and it's a cross-functional team, meaning that we have individuals from the academic area. We have uh, HR, housing, uh, as it relates to resident res life. We have athletics, all of the areas across the uh, the, un the university. We have those individuals working with us as it relates to providing information and they are called our deputies, uh, deputy coordinators, and they are trained as it relates to Title IX as well. A number of them have been doing it for over 10 years and we receive a certification and updates um, as they are per permitted or provided to us as it relates to the U.S. Department of Education and the regulations. This information is also on our uh, website and it gives titles, location, telephone number, along with the uh, location that each person and where they are and email address. If uh, you have any information that you really need or you have a concern, uh, make sure that you contact me. Here's my contact information. Um, it is on the website as well. I am in the LRC building and I am in G28B and that's on the ground floor, telephone number and my email address. If you have any questions and or concerns, make sure that you actually reach out to me and uh, I will make sure that I respond. Uh, you can send an email or you can actually give me a telephone call. I want to thank you for your time and go Flyers. And we look forward to making sure we provide services to your students. Thank you.